Hi friends, welcome to the fourth part of Geography's first chapter, Resources and Development. If you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and click the bell icon for the further notifications for the videos uploading in our channel. So, next topic is Soil as a Resource. Soil is one of the most important natural resources because it is the medium of plant growth and it also supports the life of many living organisms. The various factors which are responsible for the formation of soil are relief features, climatic condition, vegetation, parent growth materials etc. On the basis of the factors responsible for the soil formation, the color, thickness, texture and the physical and chemical properties of the soil also changes. In India, there are variety of soils because different regions in India have different types of relief features, climatic conditions, vegetation etc. In our country, there are mainly six major types of soil. The first one is alluvial soil, the second one is black soil, the third one is red and yellow soil, the fourth one is laterite soil, the fifth one is arc soil and the last one is forest soil. So the first soil is alluvial soil. The alluvial soil is the most widespread soil in our country and the entire northern plain is also made up of alluvial soil and it is deposited by three main river system Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra. The third one is, it is found in the form of sand, silt and clay. And the alluvial soil is mainly found in two age forms, Benga and Kadal. The old alluvial soil is called Benga and the new alluvial soil is called Kadal. And the Kadal is more fertile than Benga. The last thing about alluvial soil is that alluvial soil is the one of the most fertile soil and it is rich in potash, phosphoric acid and lead. And the major crops which are cultivated in this soil are paddy, wheat, sugarcane, etc. So it's all about alluvial soil. The second soil is black soil. Since the black soil is black in color, it is also known as regular soil. And the black soil is the one of the most suitable soil for the cultivation of cotton. So it is also called black cotton soil. Another important thing about the black soil is that Climatic condition and parent growth materials are the major factors responsible for the formation of black soil. And the black soil is mostly found on the Deccan Rath and the plateau regions of Maharashtra, Malwa, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Saurashtra, etc. And the another thing about the black soil is that a black soil is made up of clay material. Since it is made up of clay material, it has the extreme potential to hold moisture. And the last thing about the black soil is that it is rich in calcium carbonate, magnesium, potash and lead. So it is all about black soil. The third soil is red and yellow soil. The red soil is found on crystalline igneous rocks on southern and eastern part of Deccan Plateau. The yellow soil is found on the parts of Odisha, Chhattisgarh, southern part of Middle Ganga Plain etc. The red soil looks red in color due to the presence of iron content in it. The yellow soil looks in yellow in color in its wet or hydrated form. So it's all about red and yellow soil. The fourth soil is laterite soil. The word laterite is derived from the Latin word later which means brick. And the laterite soil is found on the tropical and subtropical region with alternate wet and dry climate. The next thing is about the formation of laterite soil. The laterite soil is formed due to the intense bleaching or erosion due to the heavy rain. The major crop which is cultivated on the laterite soil is tea and it is cultivated on the regions of Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu etc. The red laterite soil is found on the regions of Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala and it is very suitable for the cultivation of cashew nut. So it's all about laterite soil. The next soil is arid soil. The arid soil is found on arid and semi-arid parts of our country and it ranges from red to brown in color and the arid soil is sandy in texture and saline in nature. It means that the soil has a high quantity of salt. Due to the dry climate and high temperature in this region, evaporation is faster and soil lacks humus and moisture. Even though the soil lacks humus and moisture, 
it is suitable for cultivation after proper irrigation as in the case of Rajasthan. So it's all about earth soil. The last soil is forest soil. The forest soil is found on the mountain or hilly region where sufficient rainforests are available. The second thing is about the soil texture. The forest soil is loamy and silty in the valley sides and coarse grains in the upper side of the slopes. Another important thing about the forest soil are they are often prone to erosion and they are acidic with low humus content. But the forest soil which are found on the river terraces and alluvial fans are very fertile. So it's all about forest soil. So these are the major soils in our country. The last topic of our chapter is soil erosion. The denudation of soil cover and the subsequent washing down is called soil erosion. There are mainly two types of soil erosion. The first one is gully erosion and second one is sheet erosion. The gully erosion occurs when the running water cuts through the clay soil and makes deep channels known as gullies. Sheet erosion occurs when the running water flow as a sheet over a large area and the entire top soil is washed away in this erosion. So these are the major two types of soil erosion. So next we can learn about the steps to prevent soil erosion. So the first and the major step to prevent soil erosion is contour ploughing. Ploughing along the contour lines can decrease the rate of flow of water down the slopes. So it in turn helps to prevent soil erosion. The second one is terrace cultivation. Terrace cultivation is practiced by cutting down terraces on the slope and it is practiced on western and the central part of Himalaya in our country. Thus, the terrace cultivation helps to prevent soil erosion. The third one is strip cropping. The strip cropping is practiced by growing thin strips of grasses between the crops. It helps to reduce wind erosion. The last point is planting of shelter bed. The planting of shelter belt of trees helps to stabilize sand and soil on the arid and semi-arid parts of the country. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and share this video. If you have any doubts or suggestions based on this chapter, please comment on the comment box. Bye all, see you in the next video.